Scenario, you are eight years old, and it's the day before Christmas, oh yeah. <laughs> or fill in any other relevant holiday where you get tons of gifts, that's the point, okay? <laughs> this is the point, all right? So the sun went down, the lights have started to come on, the tinsel's flowing, you can smell the tape, all that scotch tape, <laughs> because there's just so many gifts right there and it's all for you right and you're just feverishly dreaming and creatively just foaming at the mouth about what you're going to do with all that stuff you've been waiting all year to get a hold of remember what that felt like how open how giddy how just excitedly dumb you felt right <laughs> And then you get older. You get a little cooler, you get a little serious, you get complicated. <laughs> Somehow in the middle of all that, becoming a perfectionist and an overachiever and just plain scared of failing, you forget how to do that little dreaming thing. How, right? Because nobody's had to teach you how to do it, right? I mean, you were an expert, full-blown master by the time you were six years old. Thank you very much. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know how to daydream and fantasize, right? But somehow, it seems as if it's gone. But how can that be? Because it's, it's natural. It's like DNA is to the body, you know? This is your legacy. You can do this. You've got this. But something seems to have gone horribly wrong. But let me tell you, it's important to get that back. And why is it important? Well, one thing about it, when you were in that giddy state, you really felt creative. Because you were dreaming of all this stuff, you felt incredibly creative. And creative expression has always been the cornerstone of anything that's happened important in the history of humanity. From fire to walking on the moon, right? So you've got to get that back. Because creative expression is in everything we do. I mean, we've even got fancy names for it, like uh, innovation, right? There's an original word, OK? Right? And what do you think of when you think of innovation? You probably think of technology, the stuff that we're doing here. But if you just back up a little bit, innovation is really just applying creativity, right, to whatever you can imagine. So 20 years ago, who would have ever thought that a small computer company in little Cupertino, California, would become the world's biggest distributor of music? A computer company. You know, the real genius of Steve Jobs is that he's giving you stuff you never knew you needed, and now you can't live without it. <laughs> but how did he do that, right? He had to dream big and outlandish, right? He had to imagine just huge beyond anything that existed at the moment. You know, recently I was listening to the radio and director James Cameron, you know, you know, Titanic guy, blue people guy, Avatar, <laughs> you know, that guy, completely innovated the way that we watch movies, been doing it for about 20 years or so. So he's talking about diving down to the deepest spot in the ocean, the Challenger Deep, you know, where the pressure is so bad that it's like putting a train car on the tip of your thumb. That's what it's like experience. But he's talking about how this inspired him. And he said, you know, it's important to have these experiences and bring back to have a story to tell. What really struck me about James is that the guy started off as a truck driver. He was a truck driver. The guy drove trucks, right? But on the side, he would write creatively at night whenever he could. He would sneak into university libraries. He taught himself special effects. This is what I'm going to do. He started making miniatures. The guy worked his way up, and he is who he is today. But the point is, if he didn't dream huge, just think about the void that would have been left. Nobody would be bawling their eyes out at Avatar. I mean, come on. <laughs> so innovations happen all the time. But they happen because people dream them. I mean, take something like flash bombing, right? You know, like uh, hordes of people breaking out in a spontaneous dance. It's like, you know, and then receding in the back. I'm not here, not here, <laughs> not here. You know, like nothing ever happened. But somebody had to dream of that, right? 
You know, or take something like language, for example. Okay? We've been redeveloping and recreating languages for as long as we've been walking. I mean, we've created language for texting, you know? L M A O. Okay, G two G C Y L. But the, the point is, we're always doing this and we're adapting it. And it's interacting. In this case, we're evolving a new language suited to a new technology medium, and it's now seeping into pop culture. I mean, WTF, right? <laughs> but the main point is, dreaming shapes our innovation. It's essential because it shapes the way that we become creative. I mean, how else can we tackle the problems of tomorrow unless we can dream beyond what we think we know today? So if you forgot it, you got to get it back. Because in the 21st century, you got to allow all that stuff to come up, all the outlandish thoughts bubble up to the surface, because that's where the innovations live. Dreaming is at the true heart of innovation. So before I go, I'm going to give you four tips to make sure that you're dreaming and that you're dreaming well. So the first one is make connections. Look, you're all in college. This is it. This is as good as it gets, hate to tell you. <laughs> but you're learning so much. Connect the dots. Everything's related. See the bigger picture. And then you get inspired to keep dreaming more. The second thing, find what fits. Trust that your dreams, whatever they are, have a place and a purpose, even if you don't know what that is right now. The third thing is, be yourself. It's hugely important to be yourself. Discover your own way. Discover what works for you. Because think of it like this. In the vast history of the universe, there will only and ever be one version of you. Just one. And guess what? When you're gone, the universe will never make another. So you owe it to yourself and the world to bring out your own unique creative innovations. Be yourself. Be authentic. And last, be naive. Now we've come full circle, back around the tree or around those gifts, smelling the tape. And here we are in our naive self. Stay innocent. Be open. Be fresh. Dream like a child. You never know what comes out. And you'll be amazed at just how brilliant that inner child is. Thank you.